Yeah, like uh, you have, I give you a thousand dollars when I put it on the table. How would you spend it? I might get myself a Godzilla statue. Really? <laughs> yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Price of Art, where we interview professionals in their industry to talk about success, their story, money, and of course, their artwork. And today we have Alpai Efe. He is a fine artist from Germany focusing on figurative drawing and painting. He's also an educator with a YouTube channel with over 680,000 subscribers, also creating art workshops around Europe. He's been in solo exhibitions since 2011 and has been a part of many group exhibitions and fairs. He also has a Patreon as well. So for people looking to support him and learn about his process, you can also find him there. Now, we couldn't really record a proper introduction with this episode but uh, because of the conversation that we were having, but here it is. Yeah, I mean, that works. I'm not German. I'm uh, uh, Turkish, so uh, oh, okay. probably, probably the the um, way things are pronounced is a bit closer. <laughs> so, you, 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 so you're not living in the Netherlands? You're living currently in Germany? I do, yeah. I'm actually uh, born and raised in Germany. I'm just a Turkish citizen. I'm an immigrant child. Yeah. And um, yeah, born and raised here, still living here, and um, very happy about it, actually. Yeah, you like it there? Yeah, Europe is great. Europe is fantastic. Short distances, it's it's great. You can just hop on a plane and in one hour be you're crazy different. You you can be in, in the entirety of Europe. It's it's great. You were like, "Oh, I don't know if I'm the right person for this because you're pretty straightforward." So, I want <laughs> I'm I don't I I'm I'm probably not the right person to be honest. Like I First of all, like there's this language barrier. Like it's not my first language, English. So sometimes the things that I say come across differently from what I intend to say. Yeah. That sometimes creates a problem. <laughs> But also, I'm very uh, honest, direct, and straightforward. Right. Like, obviously, here coming out from Germany and Europe, I, I think mm -hmm. we're known for that. And then also in general, I'm a, I'm a pretty honest and straightforward, straightforward person, and. You know how it is in the art world. It's a lot about feelings and a lot of ego is involved. And when it comes to those things, sometimes you can, uh, you can create some tension there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Do, do you have any and stories I'm, in particular that you want to share? Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can think of a few, but yeah. it's, it's usually like because of, I, I don't think I'm a very typical artist, to be honest. I don't have really? very typical. No, I, I actually, I should put it this way. You know, I'm a fine artist, right. I guess, uh, is the right way of saying. Because I spent most of my life and most of my professional career in this fine art space. So galleries, exhibitions, etc. And as you may or may not know, in those spaces, it's a lot about, yeah, artsy, farsy stuff. And I'm not that type of person, you know, I'm a down to earth, simple guy, like, uh, I'm honest, I, I like simple things. And um, I, I, I don't really feel very um, at home. Yeah. Um, in, in, in that circle, in that, in that space, in that yeah. community. Yeah. And I feel like I feel more connected to people from Yeah, maybe uh, your neck of the woods, like uh, concept artists, illustrators. Right. Um, very much people who appreciate the craft and the process, mm. but also the final result is very important to them. Yeah. yeah. And in the art world, it's a bit, or in the fine art world, it's a bit different. You know, um, it's uh, uh, depending on where you are, if you are at this uh, realist, um, Uh, little circle. It's just about technique and process and materials, etc. If you're in the uh, art fair world and gallery exhibition world, it's it's about nothing really. Like it's all talk and no substance. So um, I feel a bit lost, like in between worlds. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Has it has it always been like that? It has always been like that. Always, always, always. Unfortunately, I never managed to really get along with the people that I studied with. So I studied fine art here in yeah, Germany yeah. and 
actually a very um, ren renowned uh, academy. Uh, used to be the biggest in Europe, actually. People would come from all over the world to study there. But the people were different. Like they would show up at 12 and then they would have their first glass of wine. And I was already there working, you know. I, I showed up at eight in the morning and I already painted for four hours and I was the only one. Yeah, yeah. And everyone always looked at me a bit, a bit weird, like, what is this guy about? Like, can't he have any fun? And yeah, I was always like that. And then, you know, when you come together with people, it's always like, ah, oh, isn't that amazing? <laughs> I don't know, like all those like fancy schmancy things, like they would talk about some like independent art films. Right, like, right, right. Oh, isn't it amazing? And, and I would be like, no, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. amazing. It's totally boring, stupid movie. I don't like it at all. I, I'd rather watch, um, I don't know, The Matrix or something. And it's always been like that, unfortunately. And yeah, but I can't, I can't do That's anything funny, about man. it. It's just who I am. I'm just maybe um, in, the, in the wrong art I, I maybe the wrong branch of art that's that's funny i said man it's super because I, I don't think i like well i mean you have such a deep background to your art that it's, it's almost like you have to endure that part of of the side of the art community thing yeah. just so so you can you know do your thing type thing but yeah yeah, props to you because I I don't think like if I put myself in that situation like right now like I wouldn't last a day probably doing. Yeah, well, I wouldn't I wouldn't today either. But uh, I I used to be much younger and naive and also um, stubborn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, now it would be completely different. But back back then I was um, very determined, very stubborn. I would I would say like you know what. F it, you know, I'm just going to do my thing. Like, yeah. I, I don't, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Cause you don't really, I mean, I, 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 at least at this point now, you don't really need the, that community in order for you to grow. Cause I mean, you're, you know, one of the, one of the points that I, um, that, uh, that I was going to uh, talk to you about, is like, like, you know, besides, you know, I, I saw you, I saw your first artwork probably, it was probably two, three years ago when you did the orc painting with the white, you know, uh, 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 the white mark on his face. Mm, yeah. And, um, I think that's when I saw, because I usually don't follow traditional artists, because to me, traditional art is like so beyond my realm of possibility, because mm. I have no idea about, you know, traditional yeah. art, you know? And I saw that, and I'm like, whoa, this is like super cool. And like, I, I think you have like a very unique approach to the way you do art in particular, the way you paint and stuff, which is kind of cool. And I've been watching your videos and YouTube videos and stuff. Um, but you don't really need that community in order to grow. Like you, you, you do, you're doing your own thing for, you know, how many years for over a decade now or almost a decade. I've been uh, like a, a professional artist. I've been like, it's going to be 20 years soon. Yeah. I can't believe it, but it's going to be 20 years. But um, yeah, uh, you're right. Fortunately, I don't need that. I mean, I do still uh, um a part of what I do is still like traditional art and the gallery business. Right. It is still a significant part. It used to be bigger, obviously, but um, it's always good to keep a door open. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And you still do like art workshops around Europe and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 exactly. That I do, too. Uh, that is actually one of the more recent things that I started doing. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Like a couple of years recent, but um, compared to the rest. But yeah, that is also something I do. Yeah. So uh, at the moment, it's basically like YouTube and social media. And then uh, I do workshops and then exhibitions, gallery. Yeah, I mean, it's all over the place, actually, if, you, yeah. if I think about it. No, I mean, which is which is good, uh, especially because I mean, do you consider yourself a like a content creator or more? No, no. Right. No, no, not at all. I mean, I guess per definition, I probably would be, but I don't consider myself. Yeah, because you're big on but YouTube. Then, then again, sorry. Because you're big on YouTube, like you're constantly posting and yeah, you know, you have yeah, a big yeah. There. Actually, I'm gonna release a video tomorrow that I'm oh, uh, quite excited about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's yeah. This I was guy. gonna ask you. <laughs> I didn't want to bring it up. That's cool. 
Mm -hmm. And you know what's even cooler? It's a it's actually a crazy video. Uh, <laughs> I gotta say, I decided that I'm gonna give this painting away. Really? Yeah, well, I'm gonna give it away. Uh, not a random, one. not a random giveaway, not a raffle, right. but uh, more like a almost like a little social experiment. I want to give it away to a, someone or some place that's gonna display it for right. people to see. Right. Because in my opinion, that's what art is for, you know, to be seen, to be seen by other people. Um, and that is the catch. You know, apart from that, I'm actually going to give it away for free. <laughs> it just yeah, has yeah, to yeah. find a place where people can see and come, uh, ideally come and see the painting. That's cool. Do you have any places in mind? No concrete places, but it could be anything like anything that's publicly accessible. It could be a Call museum. What? A comic book shop? A comic book shop? Yeah, sure. <laughs> a museum, a comic book shop. It could be a cinema, a theater, a right. mall. I'm open to, to anything. Uh, the, 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 uh, the only thing that's non-negotiable is that it has to be somewhere where people can see it. Right, constantly. Yeah. It, it can't be in someone's uh, um, office private at home. Private studio. And... Private office, private studio at home. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no, no. That's cool. But yeah, yeah. Uh, getting back to your question, uh, I don't think. I, I mean, I am. I guess I am a content creator, just by by definition, per definition. But I don't think of myself as a content creator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I also, honestly, sometimes don't think of myself as a as an artist. To be honest, like, really, because I do think yeah. the same way. You do? Yes, I do. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Why do you think that way? Be because be um, it's probably a different reason from you, but uh, it's because um, I see it very different. I see art more of a, uh, is there's no feelings behind it type of thing. It's more of a product type thing. Like I need, you know, a, a client needs something. I make that out for them and I get paid. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it mostly for the most part. Um, like, for example, I, 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 I told some of my students, like, I don't do art for fun. Like, you don't see me on my spare time doing art just for fun type thing like i have a if i do art for a specific purpose whether it is for a client yeah. or for grow my skills um yeah. so it's very uh for lack of a better word it's very corporate the art that i do type thing um i mean it's it's an it's the nature of being a professional like right. it's it's the nature of being your job like uh, the, the fact that it is your job yeah 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 and uh and, and the funny thing is, like, uh, one of the questions I want to ask you, because I, I, I know you have talked about this, is, like, like to you, like, if you were to design, an, uh, like, would define what an artist is, but um, to me, is 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 anybody who can express any type of skill in a in a mm. fantastic way, any type of skill. And I'll give you an example. So I, I do personally, like, I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and I do martial arts and stuff like that. And... Now this year is the first time that I do it formally. Like I go to a, like a formal school because I always dabble mm -hmm. into it and, and, and all that stuff. But seeing my professor explaining all the little details that you don't see unless he explains it and the way he moves the body and like the way he uses the person's body in order to get something like that to me is art because it, it's like so intricate in the details mm -hmm. on the way he has to do something in order for it to work. And to get you know to accomplish the goal, like to me, those are like he's an artist on that particular skill type thing. Um, so that, that's how I normally see it. But how, how would you define it? I I wouldn't. <laughs> so I guess that's the answer. I wouldn't. I used to define it one way, and then I changed my mind about it, or I accepted yeah. the fact that that's not the definition. So at this point, I I don't care to be honest. Right, right. right. I, I used to th I used to think of artists. Like art, artist as a profession, mm. that is what I used to think. So you are an artist if creating art is your job, whatever mm. kind of art it is, doesn't matter. But I accepted the fact that most people don't accept that definition. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going along with that. But it also at that point then means that it has become a bit meaningless. You know, artist could be anyone and anything. So whatever like if you are an artist okay i don't care i don't need to be an artist like i, I don't need the label i don't need the, uh, the 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 identity or the definition it doesn't it, it doesn't matter to me 
topic. Right, right. For many people, it is uh, quite important. And um, that always, I, I always found that curious, to be honest. Like, mm -hmm. they really want to be seen and accepted as an artist. But to me, honestly, like, I couldn't care less. Like, if people tell me, and I, ma I made a video about it actually a couple of weeks or a couple of months ago. Like, if people tell me, you're not an artist, you're an illustrator. Yeah, yeah. I actually just oh, saw that video this morning. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't mind. Okay, then I'm an illustrator, and uh, another person will say you are not an illustrator. You are just uh, whatever. Like, okay, it doesn't. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't matter to me, to be honest. Do you think that's because? Uh, because I, I feel like it doesn't. Like I agree with it. Doesn't matter because it doesn't. Whether it. Whether. Whether you have a definition or a different definition of art, it doesn't change the way things are moving, anyways, or it doesn't change. Uh, you know your path or whatever you're doing at that moment. Yeah, I, I do believe that it has it has a lot to do with the fact that it's like I don't have any, or I shouldn't say any because that is never true. But I don't really have that that ego, you know, that artistic that ego. I, yeah. I used to have it when I was young. I used to be really full of myself, to be honest. Like if I look back at young Alpai, uh, he he was an idiot, to in my opinion. But I changed, uh, as we all do, and I became very humble and a lot uh, more uh, self-conscious. And I realized that all those things that I thought were very immature and stupid. And today I realize that it, it's, it, you know, even if people think of me as an artist or if I can get this label, you know, it doesn't change reality. The reality is I either can do something or I can't. Right, right. The, the reality is even uh, uh, either I, I can get a job or I cannot. You know, those things matter to me and, and not the words or the labels. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, that's, that's definitely it. Uh, so, like, I mean, because you're, 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 I think you're executing arts at the highest level how are you like for example it, it becomes it becomes harder you know the, the and you probably noticed it noticed it too it becomes harder the better you get at it to get better right yeah so yeah how you know when you're at the highest level and and this this happens in sports this happens in 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 all industry but how how are you um because you, you know this is a lifelong journey of of learning yeah. and, and improving how, how yeah. are you doing that now when you're at this level so I, I have solved the issue by um, completely getting rid of, first of all, the idea and the concept of getting better. I, I, I deleted that from my, mm. uh, from my brain. It doesn't exist anymore. To me, it's all about changing, evolution. Yeah. You know, if you are changing constantly, you know something's happening. Right. And that is the important part. Because better is could be anything. Like it's yeah, equally yeah. meaningless as artist as a as a word uh, in the context of art. But growth or not growth, but uh, evolution or um, um, just just changing. You know, constantly changing. If you do that, um, you're on track. You know that you're on track. And if it's better or not, that is not the important part. It's important to always. Um, be curious and and change yeah. and to me i have to admit it comes naturally i'm i'm just naturally an incredibly curious person curious to the point where i can get really obsessive about stuff yeah, yeah. so if i'm trouble. curious about us uh, about I, I i think it's very similar for a lot of artists but if i'm curious about a topic i can read into it for days and weeks like it's a rabbit hole that i go down and i will just come out when I can see a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that could be weeks. Um, but that's a good thing if you're an artist, because it means that there is this spark of curiosity in you that keeps you going. It keeps you on your legs and um, you are never really bored or, uh, or um, um, in, in a state of, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Staying still. If, yeah, staying still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's always, it's always, always moving, always moving. Um, yeah. yeah, and I, I was actually gonna wanna wanna ask you this. I, I found this. I was doing a little bit of research about you know 
you and your background and all that stuff all went back and um uh, uh i saw this and i was like ooh, i want to talk about about this because i know we it, this is like probably the one thing that we differ in and and i don't know if you still have this opinion about it but this is mm -hmm. one thing that we sort of differing opinions and there's no right or wrong on both of them i think both of them work but i want to see what your thoughts are and i yeah. remember you saying that um you mentioned in an interview as an advice to like artists um just to be uh good at several like be a jack of all traits type thing mm -hmm. so w what what's your what's your take on that um the idea that it's better to be a jack of all traits mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, then a master of one. Right, right, right. Uh, well, do you, do you the, still the, hold that, that opinion? Like, do you still think that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. I still do. Yeah. Because um, being an artist uh, or being a creative person in general, it requires more than just one set of skills. It requires a lot of different skills. Right, right. And if you are, you can be the greatest craftsman on the planet, but if you have difficulties, uh, quote unquote, selling yourself, mm. for example, going out there, socializing, right, right, it's an issue, um, or or it's a it's a it's a it's a problem uh, potentially. Yeah. Like if you want to get if you want to break into an industry, for example. But also these days, uh, more than ever, it's important that you know about like all kinds of different things. Like, for example, making videos with the rise of social media, um, a bit of a bit about marketing. Yeah. But also when it comes to picture making, like if we just stay there, I would always prefer someone who knows a bit about design, knows a bit about composition, color theory, all of those things than a hyper-realist. Right. Because the hyper-realist can, can copy what they see. But the other person can go beyond that. It might not be able to create the hyper-realistic drawing, but as you also know, art in most cases, I would say, it's uh, a product. Right. And it's... Um, they they don't need the best of the best of the best you know it it needs to serve the purpose it, right right and that's that's basically the rationale that i have behind it oh nice nice yeah it's it's it's, it's definitely uh, you're thinking it in a in a in a different way than 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 how i was how i was thinking it because the the way i was thinking it more was on and i agree with everything that you say because i i think especially if you're a freelancer, like if you don't work in a studio, you have to be good at selling yourself, selling your product, creating the product and, you know, doing all the, all these, all yeah. the things. Um, but I always talk about, especially like kids that are trying to break into the concept art industry. They're trying to do so many things. They want to be character designers. They want to be environment designers. They want to be 3d modelers. They want to do all this stuff. And, you know, each one of those is like, a whole new yeah, yeah, world yeah. that requires a level of skill and yeah. you know skill develops with time and yeah, so yeah. the more skills that you have to develop you know yeah, yeah. more time than you need yeah to i agree 100 percent. yeah that is a that is a whole different uh, scenario this is funny this is the first interview that haven't even made the intro yet which is great oh yeah and i thought we started already <laughs> no, i mean we started we did started so I'm gonna, but but it is it, it's great that it's going this way because I haven't even made the intro. I mean, I I recorded okay, all well. this, so we do have the thing. But <laughs> at this point, you might as well just forget about it. Yeah, or well, you just in the middle, like uh, started in the middle. <laughs> great. Um, so I I want to ask you some some uh some stuff more about the quote for lack of a better word business side of things. But uh, before I sure. do that, so if if I give you or if you have one thousand dollars right now or if i give you a thousand dollars right now how do you spend it um i can do whatever i i can do whatever i want with it yeah like uh, you have i give you a thousand dollars when i put it on the table how would you spend it i might get myself a godzilla statue really <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> That my, the minus one Godzilla movie was so damn good. I, I can't get over it. I, I cannot. Was I, it? I can't from, yeah, it's phenomenal. Oh, man. You, you haven't seen it yet? It. 
No, I was gonna watch it on the theaters, but I I haven't been in the theaters for so long that um that I lost no my way to watch it. Yeah, yeah. But well, I, heard I can highly I can highly recommend it. It was cool. it was fantastic. Nice, nice. So you will get a you will get a, a Godzilla statue. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> why not? And then I can and then I could paint it. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Cool. Um, <laughs> so in your in your in your state right now. Uh, this is one of the questions that I, that I ask everybody uh, on the shows. Like, how, how do you Alpine right now defines success? Like, to you, what oh. does that mean to you personally? That's a that's a very good question. Um, uh, honestly, I don't have a definition of success. Um, I don't. I don't. Uh, I guess I. I don't view life and the world that way oh yeah yeah if i you know, if i think about it for a second i don't think about success like i don't feel that i'm successful but i also don't feel like i'm not successful it's just not something i think about so let's just for so for example if he had um five subscribers in youtube um um and you maybe didn't have the ability to get paints. Hmm. Um, well, that would be a shitty situation. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that would be uh, shitty. But uh, it could be like you, you could have five people and they could be your best friends and you could like look forward to meeting them every week or every day or whatever. Like it, it doesn't need to be uh, unsuccessful or uh, it, it doesn't need to be uh, a sign that someone is unsuccessful. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't really view myself that way. I, I'm a bit like a child, to yeah. be honest. Like, I, I, I have stuff that I want to do. I have right. things that I want to do. Um, and I do it. And then I have goals, obviously. I do right. have goals. It's not like I'm mindlessly doing things. Right. Um, right. It's definitely not like that. But I also don't view myself as unsuccessful if I don't reach those goals. Like, oh, you don't? Okay, okay. It's just, a, it's just, it's all just a journey because I know that there will be ups and downs, and right. I guess that's also part of the reason. You know, my background in fine art. I didn't start as a successful artist, right. quote, unquote, quote unquote. I started selling my uh, drawings and paintings actually at um, comic fairs, uh, 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 comic conventions. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, when I was like 15, 16 or so, I went to comic conventions back then. And I don't know if you remember, but back then, nobody went to comic conventions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> or a very empty, uh, very small convention. And um, I sold them for 30 bucks. That's how much I got for a painting back then. And then uh, I studied art, I got into galleries, I worked with galleries, I had exhibitions, and I had sold out exhibitions. And then I had ex exhibitions where I didn't sell a single painting. And you know what I realized very quickly that, you know, life is always up and down, uh, especially as an artist. And it's all equally, quote unquote, meaningless or meaningful, depending on how you want to look at it, you know. I guess I'm a bit stoic uh, in in when it comes to those things. Yeah. You know, I don't I, I don't I don't view the highs as highs. I don't really view the lows as lows. It's all just an adventure, and it goes on, and it's all part of the adventure. So how do you how do you? Because now I'm curious. How do you? Because for example, I use I use metrics of uh, and we'll call it like that metrics of success when I release a product or I open something or I do an artwork. Yeah, I do. I do have that. Um, yeah. So how do you, how do you then um, edit your course in yeah. terms of those decisions? Yeah. I mean, if I, let's say I, I have an exhibition and I don't sell a painting, then obviously I will um, get back, go back to the drawing board and right. I will start thinking, okay, what can I change in order to sell uh, ideally all paintings? Right, right. And then I will start thinking about it, but it, I, but I don't really view it in terms of unsuccessful awesome. or successful. You know, I guess per, defin, per definition, again, like it is unsuccessful, but I don't view it that way. And I also would encourage people not to think that way. 
right, right. Because if you start thinking about yourself as unsuccessful or also like as very successful, it it changes the chemistry in your brain. And and both can be very negative. Like yeah. if you think of yourself very successful, you don't leave room, you know. Uh, you could be like 10 times as successful. Uh, you don't know. Like uh, there is no limit. And yeah. equally, like if you think of yourself as unsuccessful, you might you might as well give up, you know. But uh, it's yeah. I, I like that take. I like that take. I'm gonna take that personally. I like that. <laughs> um um so how do you so and based on that how do you because you, you I, I know you're doing a bunch of things you know you have your youtube you have your your paintings that you're you're doing on your own time you're doing the workshops and you're doing all this stuff um and i know it wasn't like that at the beginning um no. do you have like a structure then on how do you uh divide your time for each of one of those things or they're sort of like all bundled together um i don't really have uh have it all structured like um, um um i'm gonna dedicate these days or weeks to youtube um and the rest to making gallery paintings or something it's it's more like i take uh things as they come and then act and uh adjust accordingly uh youtube has become a big part of my life for better or for worse um it's just you know it's a, it's a it's a beast you know you can't really yeah. stop it i didn't get into youtube with the idea that i wanted to have uh thousands of people following me or anything that wasn't really the plan that i had but you know how it is you know you start doing something and then uh it sticks and before you know it uh it's an income stream and you can't really you can't really stop doing it Right. And, um, you know, that that is the case uh, with YouTube for me. But um, I I do uh, try to make it a thing where it's not everything that I do uh, revol revolves around YouTube. Right. Like I will I will every couple months at the very least, I will do projects that have nothing to do with YouTube specifically because I need that. I need a yeah. break. I need a break break from social media and also the whole like recording your stuff and showing it to people. Like sometimes that is the the, the toughest yeah. part about it. I can uh, I'm really looking forward to I'm gonna have a solo show at the end of this year and I'm gonna um, lock myself in the studio for a couple months and just work on that. And I'm definitely not gonna record everything because a lot of the things that I do. Um, don't make it to social media because I know that only a fraction of people are is going to be interested in it. So I don't even really? bother recording. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like what? Because I, I, I kind of see that. I with a lot of things, uh, all kinds of all kinds of paintings. I, honestly, the the stuff that you see online is just like I would say really? sixty to seventy percent of what I do. Oh yeah. The rest, the rest you don't see. I just finished a commission um, last week, and I uh, send it off. You, nobody's ever going to see it <laughs> because I because it's not like social media doesn't allow for it. Let's put it that way. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I see, I see. Yeah. I wouldn't mind sharing it, but it's pointless. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. It, it, it doesn't. Uh, I don't have anything from doing it. But and I also I have to admit I also enjoy the time where I can paint just just by yourself, just by myself. Yeah, yeah. no cables, tra <laughs> traps everywhere. Like right now, I can just move back and forth freely. I, I mean, you don't have that problem. You're probably uh, always at your desk, right? Yeah, for the most part, yeah. Yeah, but I'm normally I'm standing in front of the mm. wall uh, yeah. because I like painting uh, when the painting is uh, at the wall and I go back and forth all the time uh, to get the bigger picture. It's like right, you, right. when you, when you paint uh, on a tablet, you zoom in and so you zoom out. Yeah. And I have to do that all <laughs> in real life. And uh, it's really difficult sometimes with all the cables and the cameras and, and that stuff. 
to the point where I get really frustrated about it. I, I have to admit that sometimes frustrates me. Yeah, but and you don't have like a it almost well, it feels like not in all cases, but in some cases, like especially your commissions, you don't have like a, uh, the, or do you have like a special attachment to the paintings that like you can just send it off and forget about it and move on to the next thing type of thing? I mean, I'm giving this painting away, if you remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I can always paint it again. I mean, yeah. something similar. I don't, I don't really have any uh, deep attachments to paintings. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I have to admit, there is a, paintings, a painting where I feel like, oh, maybe I should have kept it for myself. Maybe I should have. Does one, but come, to it's mind? It, hmm? Does one come to mind? Um, let's see. Um, it's got to be one of my, uh, one from my last exhibition. Uh, let me think about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I uh, I have this series of paintings. It's called "For Your Eyes Only," yeah. and it's always. 40 by 40 centimeter paintings, small paintings of random stuff that inspires me, but everything tells its own story. Mm. Like it's self-contained story. It's all images where stuff is going on. And I had this black and white photo that I turned into a color photo of a guy from, I would say like the seventies or so. And it's this guy in a suit, barefoot with sunglasses, and he is skateboarding with a, um, uh, what's it called? Um, a briefcase. Mm. On a skateboard, barefoot, in a suit, in a dark suit, sunglasses, balls to the wall, having the time of his life, skating through a, a park or something. And I did a, did a painting of that scene. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite painterly and abstract, and I love the feeling it, uh, it, it kind of evokes in the viewer. I love that, yeah. that just the whole atmosphere and the feeling of the painting. And in hindsight, I should have kept it, but it's not a big deal. Like if I really want it, I can paint something similar again. So have, have you ever painted something like just for you? Like I want to make a painting for me to put it on a wall or to keep it for- Never. Never. Really? I have ne no, I have never done it. And it's actually something that I'm going to do this year for the first time. I have never in my life just painted something to hang it on my wall. I mean, yeah, I have painted stuff because I just want to paint it. Yeah. It's something like this here, for right, example. Right. But I've never painted something specifically for myself, but I'm going to do it Yeah, this year. Nice. I wonder what it's going to be. It's, but but I, get, I have to ask you, I mean, you are uh, uh, an, uh, the type of artist where everything you do serves a purpose. Yeah. So how attached can you get? I, I with, don't. With, I you don't can't, because, right? No, you can't. Well, for, for two main reasons. One for one is because of that one right there. And the other one is the more, uh, and, and it wasn't like this at the beginning. Like at the beginning, it used to be the opposite way. But the more attached you are to your paintings, the 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 less able you're, you are to receive critiques on it. And in this uh -huh. industry, you're receiving critiques every single day because of you're serving a, a product. And so I knew that if I if I become at, unattached with my painting, and it doesn't mean that I don't care for the painting. It just means that there's no emotional feelings, like, uh, you know, personal mm -hmm. feelings about it. When I'm working with a client, um, I know that I'm going to be able to receive that critique more efficiently and do my job yeah. more efficiently. Um, and before I used to do paintings for... More, more like your Batman painting in the back, like more like fun for me type thing. And I used to do, you know, fanner and stuff like that. And that was like, you know, however it comes out, it comes out type thing. But because uh, nobody's going to really give me a critique on it. Um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that, that's, that's how I see it. Yeah. Uh, it's, but it's something uh, I believe that many artists struggle with, like mm -hmm. the attachment part. Yeah. Like they're just getting overly attached it, but it also it's not like the finished not only the finished uh artwork but also in the beginning of the process mm -hmm. like getting too attached to it oh i gotta do it this way i gotta do it that way I, I, it's something that people ask me a lot like how can i get better yeah it's that is definitely part of it like free yourself become like, attached yeah. detach yourself from what you are doing 
and uh, don't be precious about it. It's, it's one of the reasons why I'm actually, I, I don't want to say against, but I feel like sketchbooks are stupid and used the wrong way. People use sketchbooks the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> we have to talk about this because I, I have never filled a sketchbook before. Yeah, why? Never. Why would you fill a sketchbook? Doesn't make any sense to me. I have, tw I, I'm not kidding you. I have 20 sketchbooks. None of them is filled. That's great. None of them. It, it's, it's just not a thing, honestly. And um, I always advise people like, if you want to like start a painting uh, or if you're not sure, like uh, start it somewhere or start it in such a way where you can always throw it away and start over. Mm -hmm. um, I, get all, I get shit for it all the time, but this is part of the reason why I encourage people to use a projector when they create images. Mm. Of course, you have to learn how to draw. I mean, everyone can see it if you can't draw. Right. You can see it if I can draw or if I can't draw. It doesn't matter if I use a projector or not. Like uh, a, a professional artist or a experienced artist knows these kinds of things and can see it. Yeah. But for me, it's more about if you spend hours making a drawing, you get so attached to it. If you start painting, you will never start over. Mm -hmm. Never in your life will you allow yourself to be like, ah, oh, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to start over. Yeah. And yeah. to trick yourself to do that, I, I can trick myself to do that with everything. Like, I don't mind. I, I throw everything away. Actually, this year, I, um, uh, I didn't paint it twice, but I built the canvas twice. Uh. The other one is right there, leaning uh, on the other side of the room. Because I wasn't satisfied with how I stretched the first one. Mm. I, didn't, I didn't like it. It wasn't uh, tight enough. Right, right, right. Just throw it away. It's, it's, it's just material. And yeah. adapting, that, adapting that also helps with the learning process, I feel. Yeah. yeah. It helps a lot. So would you say, because I know, and I've seen some of your uh, paintings, and I, remember, I don't know anything about traditional painting, but when you do that first sketch on your canvas before you seal it, like even at that point after you seal it, you have to be open to change things from the yeah, drawing into, sure. the, yeah. into the painting yeah of course yeah you have to you have to be like uh, even if you have that drawing you you have to be um bold enough and also uh, um daring enough yeah to take all of that away paint over the drawing lose it and find it again right now i don't have a problem with that because i know how to get it back like i i know how to draw i i've i've done it for many many hours yeah. but i don't need to i don't need to do that and um <clears throat> for for a, a, a traditional artist it's a it's a big deal you know making a drawing if i make a drawing on that canvas at that size it can take me days Days and then I can still have the composition off if I if I'm not careful, because it's just it 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 exists in a completely different dimension space. And if I then have if I am then like at the beginning of the process afraid that I'm gonna mess it up, I I might as I might as well not uh, not start at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a. It's like almost relationships when you go into a relationship thinking they're gonna betray you and and, and yeah you know, exactly exactly started yeah even started uh, so uh, so how do you know how do you know when a painting is done because I get this question a lot and for me it's easy to to answer because once once the image serves its purpose at that point you know I can stop right there and I already serve I don't need to work over it over that purpose, I can just hand it in and it serves a purpose and that's the next move to the next one. But in your case, like, how does that, how does that work? I mean, sometimes it's like that, honestly. Right. Sometimes there is a purpose, you know, I wanna, uh, I just wanna uh, create a certain atmosphere, a certain effect or whatever. 
and then it is very uh, purpose oriented. But oftentimes it's more like at the point where you where you are just changing things. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not getting better or worse, but you're making changes. And yeah, the image is changing, but it's just a different version of the same image. At that point, you're just pushing paint around. You might as well stop and then move on to something else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> man, it's, it, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. Like even in our both different worlds, like a lot of the, a lot of the way of thinking, uh, you know, sort of like parallels with each other. Um, and in terms of the, cause, cause I always saw traditional painting being like super hard to, which I'm, I'm guessing it is super hard to like the whole money part in terms of like surviving off of it. I mean, and, and you have multiple incomes, uh, streams, um, yeah. which is, which is, I'm guessing it's a lot easier now than before, but like, for example, when you're doing a traditional painting for a client or just to sell on your workshop, like how do you structure, like, do you have a set amount of hours that you want to spend on a painting? So it becomes this value that you're going to sell it to, or like, how do you structure that? Um, it it takes how, how how however long it takes. It's um, yeah. I don't I don't I don't really determine that beforehand. I will always do what's best for the art. You know that is that is my base mindset. Honestly, mm. like I will do whatever it takes to create the best art that I can. Yeah. When it's within my uh, um, uh, possibilities. Sometimes, of course, you're working with deadlines. Sometimes yeah. you're uh, working against time. But if I'm not, it's going to take however long it's going to take. Yeah. So I think you're like 100 hours into a painting and like, and I'm like, I don't even know how he does it because it, it, it might work. Like I have to turn in images every day, like four or five images. Yeah, yeah, images. Yeah. And so like, like this whole concept to me of spending even more than now, eight, 12 hours on a painting is like on feels like I haven't done that in such a long time just because of the nature of the industry that I work with, you know? Um, so in your case, when I see like, oh, I spent a hundred plus hours in this and I'm like, how does it like, how do you even, how do you even? Yeah, do but, but honestly, honestly, uh, making traditional art is also um, a bit different in a sense that yeah. everything just takes much longer. Yeah whether you like it or not just the right. act of mixing colors you know there is no picking colors right, right, right. <laughs> there is just mixing physically mixing and sometimes piles and piles of colors yeah, yeah, and it yeah. takes forever sometimes so um just that uh takes a very long time and also the dimension you know painting right. something that is this right. big it just takes longer you know if i paint it at this size obviously it's just going to take me a couple of days or maybe a day but um yeah that's the that's part of the reason why uh, art is uh, or can be, I should say, um, expensive. Yeah, because it takes a long time. Yeah, um, and physical art is more expensive most mm -hmm. of the time than uh, digital art or il illustrations, even mm -hmm. for that reason, I guess yeah. part partly at least. Do, do you personally take into consideration, like for example, a painting in the back? If you were gonna sell it, do you or any of your paintings take in consideration the amount of product that it take, like the paintings into the price? No, or is no, it no, just no. The time? No, I, I don't, I don't do that. No, no, I, I, I don't even uh, take the time into account because really? that, mm, not really, not really. Sometimes, sometimes I will, but uh, you know, what if I, for whatever reason, <laughs> need uh, five times? Uh, uh, the 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 amount of uh, time yeah, to yeah, finish yeah. the painting. Am I gonna uh, charge five five times the amount of money? Right. Probably not. So no, no. I I do have a like a like a base oh, rate okay. for paintings, but I will adjust, of course. Like paintings that are more complex, right, right, right. Um, are more expensive. So obviously, this painting here, if I just paint Batman at this size will have a price but then if i did the same painting and it has batman and his rogues gallery all of them 
right, 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 on the right. same painting. Obviously, that has to be a bit more expensive because it's so much more work. Huh, that's cool. Yeah, so I saw your Lilith painting, man, and I was like, oh, man, this is amazing. Like, I, 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 I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I'm looking at it, actually. It's oh, just, really? yeah, it's still with me here in the studio. It's, uh, I, I love that painting. I do, actually. I still um, regret that I didn't go with the other idea and reference that I had mm. initially, but you know. You can always I, paint it. Yeah, yeah, true, true. <laughs> and also, you know, hindsight is 2020. Yeah. <laughs> did you, did but, you it, but that was so much fun. The painting was so much fun. And it's one of those things, like, I, I'll be honest with you, like, I don't get anything for doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just cost me money. It cost me money, it cost me time. <laughs> I could have painted so many paintings that I could have sold in that time, but I just wanted to do it. Yeah. Because I, uh, maybe I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm stupid. Who knows? When, when I first saw it, I for some reason thought that Blizzard gave you a commission to do it. No. Uh, when I first saw it, but. No, they have before. I did yeah. something for Overwatch for them. Right. Um, but they didn't for that, for whatever reason. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a great painting, man. Like I saw, I was like, thank wow, you. wow. Thank very, you, thank very, very you. Amazing, amazing. Appreciate um, it. Well, I don't want to take too much more of your time, but I do have one last question that I always ask at the end of the show. Um, yeah, sure. As artists, you know, we, uh, you know, we, everybody has to sacrifice something in terms of, in order to get something, right? And I know, you know, I've had my sacrifices in the past, you know, decade. Um, everybody knows, oh, yeah. but oh, what yeah. has been your sacrifice to be where you're, where you're at right now? Oh, that's a, that's a can of worms. You know, oh, yeah. so we, like we, can, we can, we can go on another hour with that. <laughs> it's everything, everything, Yeah. everything, everything you can think of. Uh, it's like, you know, the, you know, uh, the quote by, uh, I, I think it's, uh, Conor McGregor. Like I dedicated my life to this and I lost my mind in the process. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty much it. You know, I, and more <laughs> and more sometimes it's, it's a lot. If you really want to, if you if you really are passionate about it and obsessed to, to a point where you're obsessed about it, you got to sacrifice pretty much everything. Maybe you don't have to, maybe there are other ways, but to me, that was certainly the case. And from what I hear uh, you saying, it's similar for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's, it, it's funny because I always, I always talk about, um, or I always get a little like, eh, like, look, I don't get mad, but when I, when I hear this whole balance, work-life balance thing, um, I don't know if you've heard that before, but- it, it, Sure, it, yeah, it, of course. But like- that to me doesn't exist like that to me that's not that's not especially if you're starting out like you because balance to me is the same equal amount of both or or three things right it's just balance yeah but when you're starting art and when you're developing and you're yeah. obsessed about something there's no there's no balance like you spend no. all your time into this no you, balance you not to, at all you have to put all the stuff you know outside because totally. it doesn't it doesn't it's not going to serve you yeah um, I mean, it's different for me today, like very different. Right. Like I, I live a very different life and also I have a very different mindset today yeah. from what I had uh, when I started out. But when I started out, I, in terms of sacrifices, I think I made a lot. And I don't know if I, if I regret them, but I certainly feel like uh, I don't feel good about them. Let's put it that way. Like I lost friends um relationships holidays like i didn't go on holidays for years i used to work seven days a week for years and i used to wake up at five in the morning five o'clock in the morning yeah and then work 14 hours a day 16 hours a day paint like a maniac um and all all of that to to become this this person or this, yeah, the, this uh, version of myself that I that I had in my mind. Mm. I, I I I I certainly feel like um, it was not all of it was necessary. 
But at the end of the day, if I didn't do it, I wouldn't be where I am today. So I don't know how true that statement is. Yeah. But the sacrifices, I if I think about it, I'm like, ah, man, you know, we were such good friends. Man, you know, you know how it is, like everyone goes out, but you're staying home. Oh, yeah. Like I'm staying home. Sorry, guys. Like yeah, I yeah. can't go anywhere. Like I'm home. I gotta work, I got work to do. And those things, you know, also like when it comes to health, I had my fair share of health issues like that I had to deal with just because all of this shit is toxic. Oh, right. It's right. just poison, you know, it's straight up poison. Isn't there like a way around, like, isn't there like, like something that you can do about that in particular? I mean, yeah. Use different products it's toxic or something. Fumes. So yeah. you can you can you can try to minimize. I mean, these days I don't use any of that stuff anymore. Right. But you know, like when you are 20 years old, you think you will live forever. Yeah. yeah. I was drinking, smoking, and painting at the same time. <laughs> 10 hours a day. Uh, <laughs> paint, like I was I was literally like with buckets splashing paint against the canvas yeah stuff like that while smoking <laughs> i don't anymore by the way it's gonna be uh oh, 10 years soon that i don't is that, is that the 30 percent we don't see on social media <laughs> no, no 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 that is that is the old old version of me that doesn't exist anymore yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no but when i was 20 i could do all of that you know right. i could also like i could also work out and do all those kinds of things um and or and eat whatever I want and get away with that. You know that also has changed. But the the sacrifice thing is is actually is huge. And to be honest, I wouldn't recommend anyone to do it. <laughs> I couldn't. Like in my like if I if I feel like I have a, a a responsibility as someone who's been doing this for a long time and has an audience, um, I, I can't recommend people to um to pursue it not, not to pursue it but to uh sacrifice mm. so much for what they what they think will make make them happy because it won't like let's be real like uh, even if you get to the point that oh, you yeah. have in your in your head it's not going to make you magically happy right right yeah of course of course the things that make you happy are completely different things yeah completely different yeah like well cool man i mean we, we reached a point i don't want to take too much of your time but you know i just i just want to say that you know again it's been a pleasure like it's crazy that i, I still haven't done the intro i'm gonna do it like separately and just i mean yeah you just do it at the end why yeah. not yeah. <laughs> here's the intro <laughs> see ya um <laughs> but uh uh you know Congratulations on everything that you have accomplished. Like, you know, uh, I, I really Thanks, admire man. what you're doing. I'm pretty sure a lot of people do. Um, Thanks a lot, man. And so I just want to give you props. What's what's next for you? So uh, next for me is actually um, after this year, which I'm genuinely a bit excited about because I have absolutely no idea if nobody is going to uh, reach out or if uh, hundreds of people will reach out. I have no idea. It could be anything. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious to see where this painting ends up. I would love for it to have a cool place, the coolest possible place, ideally. But then also the, one of the next things that I'm going to do is actually I want to paint my first mural. I have never oh, painted nice. a mural in my life. Never. It's one of those things that I've never gotten to, but I'm going to do it in a couple of months, I think. 